Hi there. In this video, I would like to talk to you about the Intersect tool. We've been going through different geoprocessing tools, and this time we're going to focus on Intersect. And the first thing I want you to know about Intersect is that Intersect is all about logical and. Okay, logical and. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, when you're going through and learning uh, the geoprocessing tools, you can think about many of them in terms of logical operations. And in fact, I have seen people give lessons about geoprocessing tools that were taught entirely through the use of logic tables. And I'm not going to do that here. We're not going to go through them in uh, that, uh, that way here. Uh, but I do want to talk to you about some of them in terms of logical operations. And so the first one that's important to do that with is the intersect operation. And its logical operator is the AND uh, operator, logical AND. So whenever you're in a situation where you need to know uh, all of the areas that are A, whatever A is, and that are B, whatever B is, the tool that you need in order to get at that information is the intersect tool. You should use intersect in those situations. So let me show you what that means in terms of geometry. So let's take a look at these two vector data files. Let's say that I've got two different uh, data files here. And in one of the data files, I have one rectangle. And in the other data file, I've got uh, another rectangle. You can think about these as uh, the geometry being held in two different shape files if you work a lot with shape files. So what would happen if we were to put both of these files through the intersect operation? Well, we would get this because this is the area that is both A and B. Okay, you can think of this as where these features overlap. Okay, that's where is A and B. Uh, we would say that the intersection operation would return uh, this geometry here. And that's what the intersection oper uh, the intersect operator is all about. Uh, I like to occasionally also count the number of features that are in the data files that are input into an operation and then those that are uh, returned from an operation, especially when you're comparing different geoprocessing tools like we will be as we go into some more. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in this situation. I've got two input data files. Each data file has one feature in it. That means I've got two features that are input into the operator. And then when I ran the intersect operator on this, I end up with one feature, one feature returned, at least the way that the geometry of these features are laid out. So that's important and we'll compare that to other geoprocessing operators as we move forward. Meanwhile here, let's go ahead and take a look at another abstract example of the intersect operation. So here we've got two different vector data files again. One of them this time though contains two features. I have these two uh, gray rectangles right here. Okay, so that's in one data file. The other data file contains one feature. It contains this yellow circle. So, you know, you put them inside your GIS and they overlap in this way. So when we execute the intersect operation on these two data files, the result is a new data file of course, that has two features in it, okay? The resulting data file that results from the intersect operation has two features in it, and it's these two quarter circles, okay? See that? This is important, because I want you to notice how the intersect operation is chopping up, for lack of a better term, how, term, how it's chopping up uh, the geometry of these input features to return something. So in this case, I had three input features in two different files. One file had two features, one file had uh, one feature, and then when I get an output here, I'm getting a file output that has two features in it, right? These two quarter circles. Uh, importantly, you can intersect more than two data sets at a single time. Uh, intersect is extremely handy like this, and you can probably think of lots of situations that you might be in where you need to know all areas that are A, and B, and C, and D, okay? So you can load all of those into an intersect operation and ask it, what, what, where are all the areas that are all of those things? It'll tell you where they all overlap. 
So you can handle multiple data sets in a single intersect operation. So when most people do think about the intersect operation, it is uh, pretty natural to think in terms of intersecting areas. We can probably think of lots of examples of, as far as our application areas are concerned, where we would like to intersect areas. We need all areas that are A, B, C, and D, and so forth. However, uh, I would just like to note here at the moment that it is acceptable to intersect things with different geometry types. That can be done. Uh, I don't have enough time to get into all of the different possible combinations, and there are a lot of them out there, especially when you start turning on and off some different, uh, different tools and features uh, of the particular intersect tool. Uh, that we can get into a lot of those options in uh, further, more dedicated study in a later video. Uh, but for now, I just want to uh, make a note to you that if you are using multiple geometry types in a single intersect operation, uh, then the result of that intersect operation will be a data file with the same geometry type as that uh, of the lowest dimensionality geometry that was input into the operation. Okay, so that might sound complicated, uh, but it just means that the output file uh, of any intersect operation is going to have a geometry type of whatever the lowest dimensionality geometry type that was input to it uh, happened to be. So if you um, are intersecting points, lines, and areas, I have three different files, I'm intersecting points, lines, and areas, and I'm intersecting them, then the output, if any, of the operation would be points because the point file is the lowest dimensionality input. Uh, if there are lines and areas being intersected, then the output, if any, would be lines. And I do say if any output uh, because it is possible to try to intersect two files that actually don't have an intersection. Uh, and so what would happen if you run an intersect operation in that case is you'd generate an output file, but it would be empty because there's no overlapping areas. So for instance, if I were to run an intersection operation on these two data files, okay, I can do that. That's a legitimate thing to do. Uh, but uh, a new data file will be created, but there'd be nothing in it because there is no area that is both A and B in this circumstance. Okay, there is no overlapping uh, area. So why would I do this? Well, in this particular case, I probably wouldn't. It's probably very easy to look at this situation and say, oh, well, there's no intersection between these two. There is no overlap. Um, but uh, it might not be the case that you could tell that by just looking at any two data sets, because we might be looking at uh, or working with data sets that are very large, that are very complicated, where it isn't easy just by visual inspection to say, oh, these two have overlapping areas or that they don't. So uh, you could find out whether or not there are areas of overlap between two different data files by running an intersection operation. And if it doesn't return anything, then you know, okay, there were no overlapping areas. So it's very easy to come up with examples of when you would use the intersect operation. I mean, we come up with examples for this in class and students can very readily list all kinds of uh, situations where they might want to use the intersect operator. I mean, for instance, we might want to know all areas in a city that are zoned for heavy industrial use and that have a certain soil type. Okay, they have two different data files. If you have a file that tells you where all of the areas in the city are that are heavy industrial, then you have another, or zoned for heavy industrial, and then you have another data file that uh, has all of the uh, areas that have the soil type that you're looking for. And you need to find all areas that are heavy industrial and have the soil type. That's classic intersect. Intersect those two uh, data files and you end up with your answer. Here are all of the areas that are both. Bingo. That's, that's, that gives it to you directly. So as another answer, or another example rather, uh, maybe you're interested in all areas that are within 300 meters of a river that also have a certain type of vegetation. So maybe thinking in terms of combination here, you have already buffered your river out to 300 meters. 
So you have this data file of all areas within 300 meters of this river, but then you have this other file that shows you where a particular kind of vegetation is that you're interested in. So where are all the areas within 300 meters of this river that also uh, have this vegetation type? If you intersect those files, you get your answer. That's what you're looking for. All areas that are this and all areas that are that. If you want to, we can add even more criteria. What if you're looking for all areas within 300 meters of that river that have a certain vegetation type and that are within the known habitat of a particular animal species and that are within one kilometer of a particular ranger station? So that's four criteria. All areas within 300 uh, meters of the river and all areas that have this certain type of vegetation and that are uh, the part of the habitat of this particular species and that are within a certain amount of distance from the ranger station. So if I have files that show all of those, I can just put them all into the intersect operator. Boom, 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 boom. You end up with the, uh, with the answer of all of the areas where those overlap, if any, if, there are happen if they do happen to be any. So uh, what happens to the attribute table when you do this? That's a very important to think about when we're talking about especially these geoprocessing tools where uh, we have an associated logical operator, when we're talking about these logical operations. What happens to the attribute table of these files when you intersect them? Uh, so great question. Let's take a look at that. So in the case of the intersect operator, the attributes from all of the input data files will be copied to the output. Okay, so uh, this is very significant because it basically means that you are also intersecting the attribute tables. You're getting an intersection of the attribute tables as well. So returning to an earlier example with this geometry that we looked at, uh, if we were to intersect this circle with these two rectangles, and let's just say for the sake of example here that we are looking at uh, city zoning areas and uh, soil types. Let's say that this rectangle is heavy industrial areas, this rectangle is light industrial areas, and then this circle represents all of the sandy soil in the city. Kind of strange geometry for this, but we're just thinking about this kind of abstractly. So let's say that's what we've got. So then we intersect these and we end up with this output of these quarter uh, circles, right? That's the output of the geometry. Now, when we open up the attribute table for the uh, result, when we open up the attribute table, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see that there's going to be a field in the attribute table for the zone, and then we're also going to find a field in there for the soil type. So it's going to copy over the soil type, which in both cases were a sandy soil, but then here it's going to copy over the attribute uh, information from this rectangle and in over here it's going to copy the attribute table or information from this rectangle so it enters light industrial into the appropriate one and heavy industrial into the appropriate one as well. So this is very handy so you can see what's happening to the attribute table. Systematic manipulation of the geometry and systematic manipulation of the attribute tables. That's what these are all about. This is the way that the intersect operator works. Uh, so there you go. Uh, the bottom line here is that the intersect operation is all about logical and and it's extremely useful to you. Anytime that you need to know something, uh, know all areas that are this and this and this and this, use that, that word and, uh, I want you to immediately think intersect. We need to intersect those. Uh, it's a tool you're going to use all the time. So uh, we'll wrap that up with intersect here and we'll move on to the next geoprocessing tool in the next video. <laughs>